Hello guys and welcome to Python Programming Tutorials by Amuls Academy. In the previous tutorial, we discussed about the factorial program and in that we use the inbuilt function factorial to print the factorial of any positive integer. Today in this tutorial, we are continuing discussion on the factorial number. And today in this tutorial, we are writing the Python program to print factorial of any positive integer using recursion function. So in the previous tutorial, we discussed about the definition of factorial that is factorial of non-negative integer n, which is denoted by n factorial is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. For example, if I want to find out the factorial of 5, then I'll write like this 5 factorial and this is nothing but the product of all positive integer less than or equal to n or 5. Okay, so this is nothing but 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into and 1. Okay, and if I want to find out the 4 factorial, then that is nothing but 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 okay okay this is what we discussed in the previous tutorial and today we are writing the python program to print factorial of any positive integer using recursive function and here recursive function is nothing but if a function calls itself then it is called as recursive function and here we can see 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is nothing but 4 factorial. So here we can see 4 into 3 into 2 1. Instead of this, we can write like this, right? 5 into 4 factorial, right? Instead of writing 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, we can write 5 into 4 factorial because 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is nothing but 4 factorial. Or we can write this like this, 5 into 5 minus 1 factorial right so in general we can write like this we take 5 as n so we can write n into n minus 1 factorial today we are writing the factorial program using the recursive function and here recursive function is nothing but if a function call itself, then it is called as recursive function. And in the recursive function, there are two parts. And the first part is called as base case. And the second part is called as recursive case. Here this base case is nothing but the stopping condition. Here the recursive function will call itself until the stopping condition arrives. And in our factorial program also base case and recursive case will be there. And as I said base case is the stopping condition. So here in the factorial program stopping condition is when n is equal to 0 because 0 factorial is 1 right. Uh, for example if I take the example of 5 factorial. So this is nothing but 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, right? So here we can see last value is 1, right? This is the stopping condition and the 0 factorial value is 1. So here we are taking the stopping condition as when n is equal to 0. And the recursive case is this n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 factorial. Okay, this is the recursive case and base case is when n is equal to 0, it will give output as 1. So here this is the base case and this is the recursive case. Okay, so then we'll start the program. Okay, in the Python file, we need to define a function. Because here in our program, we are using the recursive function. So first we need to define a function. So to de define a function, we'll use keyword def followed by the function name. Here I'll give my function name as fact, short form for factorial. And here I'll take the parameter as n. I want one parameter. I'll take that as n. 
next inside this function body i'll take if else conditional statement here if will contain the base case and else will contain the recursive case okay so first if if n value is equal to equal to 0 okay here in our program we'll ask the user to enter the input okay that is we'll ask the user to enter the number for which he want to find out the factorial here i took the that variable name as n okay so here first we are checking whether the entered input is equal to equal to 0 if you entered input as 0 then it will return 1 okay because value of 0 factorial is 1 and this is our base condition okay next else if the entered input is greater than 0 okay so then we'll return the recursive condition that is n into factorial of n minus 1 for example if you want to find out the 5 factorial you will enter the input as 5 right so here n value become 5 so it will check whether 5 is equal to equal to 0 no it is not true right so here if body will be skipped and control goes to the else and here 5 into factorial of n minus 1 that is n value is 5 4 that is here it will give output as 5 into factorial of 4 that's what we wrote here right here if i want to find out the 5 factorial then i'll write like this 5 into 4 factorial or we can say 5 into 5 minus 1 factorial right in same way here i want to find out the factorial of n that's why i write n into factorial of n minus 1 so this is the factorial function body next here outside the function first i'll take variable n as i said here we are asking the user to enter the input and that entered input will be stored in the variable n that's why here i used n and to take the input we are using input function here i'll write a message which will display on the output screen enter the number as we know this input function will take input as the string value but here we want an integer value that is now if i enter input as 5 that is if i want to find out the 5 factorial then here i'll enter the number as 5 right and now if i entered that it will treat that as the string value and that string 5 will be stored in the variable n but here we want the integer value so here i need to convert this string value to int so here i used int function next i'll take one variable called result which will store the factorial of uh, entered number or we can say final result here i'll write the function call okay this is the function call we can see here function name is fact and it contains one parameter so here i mentioned fact n okay so now i'll print result n is result okay here as we know if we write any message within the double quotes then it will be printed as it is on the output screen so here i want this factorial of and is as it is on the screen that's why i wrote this within the double quotes here i want the value of n and the value of result that's why i mentioned without the double quotes okay so here uh, we are done with our code now so we need to save this and uh, run this so it will ask enter the number now i want to find out the factorial of 6 so i'll enter number as 6 and here we can see the factorial of 6 is 720 enter the factorial of 5 guys so i'll get 120 
okay here what happens is this is the function definition okay this will be executed only when this is called only when this function is called so after execution first control goes to here this instruction will be executed so it will ask the user to enter the number for example if i execute now here we can see enter the number so we'll enter 4 that is we want to find out the factorial of 4 so i'll enter 4 here okay so after that here that 4 will be stored here that entered input will be stored in this variable n next control goes to the next line and here we can see the function call factorial of n that is fact of n here fact is the function name which is defined here call so control goes to the function definition that is here okay here we can see n value is here 4 right we entered the value as 4 so here the value is 4 okay so first it will check whether n is equal to equal to 0 no it is not so it will skip this and it will go to else part and it will execute this so here first we want to find out the 4 factorial so now control is here return n into factorial of n minus 1 so that is nothing but 4 into factorial of 3 because n value is 4 so 4 into factorial of 3 now here we can see another function call that is to the factorial of 3 that is this is calling the same function with the different parameter so this execution will be paused okay it will stop this execution for now it will try to execute this that is factorial of 3 okay here it will try to find out the factorial of 3 here we can see this function contains the function call for itself with the different parameter so this is called as recursive function okay now this function call will be executed first so now n value become 3 here okay so here it will check whether n is equal to equal to 3 no so it will execute else part and it will comes here here factorial of 3 is nothing but n into factorial of n minus 1 it is nothing but 3 into factorial of n minus 1 that is 3 minus 1 that is 2 and here we can see another function call so it will pause this execution okay and it will try to find out the factorial of 2 it will try to okay so now n value becomes 2 control goes to here and n value is 2 it will check whether n is equal to equal to 0 no it is not so it will skip this and it will go to else part and it will execute this now n into factorial of n minus 1 here n value is 2 so it will become 2 into factorial of 2 minus 1 that is 1 here we can see the another function call right so it will pause this and it will try to find out the answer for this factorial of 1 now it will try to find out the answer for factorial of 1 okay now n value is 1 so here so control again goes to here so factorial of 1 so n value is 1 now so here inside the function body it will check whether n is equal to equal to 0 no it is not so again control goes to else part and it will execute this here n value is 1 so it will become 1 into factorial of 0 okay again it will see the and function call right so first it will try to find out the output for this so it will pause this and in the separate memory space it will try to find out the factorial of 0 so now it want to find out the factorial of 0 okay so here again this function is uh, executing here n value is 0 now so first it will check whether n is equal to equal to 0 yes it is true so now we came to the stopping condition that is it becomes true so it will return 1 so here 
we got the output for factorial 0 that is 1 okay so now this execution is done so it will resume the or restart the previous paused execution that is this okay so it will restart this execution and here we got the output for factorial 0 right that is 1 so here we can solve this now here now factorial of 0 value we know so here instead of this we can write the factorial of 0 value that is 1 so here 1 into 1 so here 1 we got the output for factorial 0 that is 1 into 1 so 1 so we now we got the answer for factorial 1 so now what it will do is now it will restart or uh, resume the previous execution that is this okay here now we know the answer of factorial 1 that is 1 right so now it will execute this so it will restart this or resume this execution here we know the factorial 1 value that is 1 so here instead of this so we can enter the value that is 1 that is factorial 1 value so we will get output as 2 so now we got the output for factorial 2 we can assume the previous execution that is this execution so it will restart that execution and here now we know the factorial 2 value that is 2 so now 3 into 2 so here it will become 3 into 2 so it will give output as 6 okay now we got the output for factorial 3 so so it will resume the previous execution that is this okay so here now we got the output for factorial 3 that is 6 right so instead of this that is 6 so here 4 into 6 that is 24 right 6 4 is 24 so now it will return this value here we can see we use return so it will return this value to here and that result will be stored in this result that value 24 will be written here and that will be stored in this result okay whatever the value returned is will be stored in this result here we want to print the value of this result that's why here we wrote result without the double quotes here we entered the 4 if we enter we can see the output 24 okay this is about the factorial program using recursive function here we can see if a function call itself then this is called as recursive function okay so that's it for now thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel i'll meet in next class till then take care